As soon as the grapes arrive at the winery, they are put into a stainless steel hopper. From here, they are conveyed to the next stage, the stemmer. A large perforated drum rotates in one direction. Inside this drum, there is a device which rotates in the opposite direction, thus separating the grapes from the stems. The stems are disposed of while the grapes drop through the holes and then proceed to the crusher. Both the speed and the pressure exerted by these rollers can be finely regulated according to the type and ripeness of the grapes being processed. The crushed grapes and the juice released by the process of crushing, the must, is then pumped into stainless steel tanks. Yeasts Single-celled organisms, which are found on the skins of grapes, are of course also present in the must. Fermentation occurs when these yeasts convert the sugars of the grape into alcohol. During this conversion, carbon dioxide is released, and this can be seen as bubbles. These bubbles cause the grape skins to float to the surface of the must and form a thick layer over it. We will digress for a moment to explain that the characteristic color of red wine comes from the pigments found on the inside of the grape skins. We can only achieve the desired color for the wine by making sure that the skins are in contact with the juice for exactly the right amount of time at the required temperature. The juice is drawn off from the bottom of the tank and then pumped back over the layer of grape skins to ensure proper contact between these and the juice. By controlling the time of this contact, we extract the desired amount of color from the skins. Another thing we notice during the fermentation period is a rise in the temperature of the must. Ideally, red wine vinification needs a temperature of 28 degrees Celsius, as the wine can then develop its character while keeping its freshness. To maintain this temperature, the tanks are cooled, either by spraying the tank with cooled water or by putting coolers in the tanks. The juice, now the desired color and having acquired its characteristic taste, is separated from the grape skins and pumped into another tank. When the alcoholic fermentation is complete, a second fermentation should occur. This is called the malolactic and is caused by the action of bacteria as opposed to yeasts. During the second fermentation, malic acid is converted into lactic acid, which makes the wine smoother and helps it to mature. Grapes are first put in a stainless steel hopper and from there conveyed to the stemmer, where their stems are removed. The grapes are then sent to the crusher, where they are partially crushed and some of their juice is expressed. The yeasts naturally found in the skin of the grapes remain in this juice. These crushed grapes now continue on to the press. This modern pneumatic press treats the grapes with respect. Air or water pressure is applied to the grapes in the cylinder so that they are pressed against its inner sides and the remaining juice is extracted. The grape skins are removed at this stage and the juice is put into a tank where it is cooled for an entire night. This is when the settling process takes place and the cooled must becomes clear. This is a natural process when the particles that are suspended in the must settle out. This always happens before fermentation. It takes 12 to 14 hours depending on how many particles are suspended in the must. Wines that come from must that has been allowed to settle naturally have a purer aroma their color is more stable and less prone to oxidation. The 
clarified must is decanted into a tank for fermentation. This tank is kept cool so that fermentation occurs at about 18 degrees Celsius. When all the sugar in the grape juice has been converted into alcohol, the fermentation process is complete. The wine is then transferred to storage tanks.